All right, one last example. It's got some words. Suppose the marginal revenue for a certain product. You could tell I was very inspired this weekend when I typed that up. A certain product. What would you like the product to be today? Aglets? That's what they're called. Yes, wasn't that an extra credit name? Yeah. The aglet, the little hard plastic piece at the end of a shoelace is called an aglet. Yeah. Now you know. Ding, ding, ding. It's given by the function r prime of x is negative x. And no revenue was made when no items were sold. Oh my gosh! Find the revenue, find the demand function. Oh, this is torture. All right, we know the derivative, r prime. How do we get the revenue function? Take the antiderivative, very good. So part A, we're going to take the antiderivative of r prime of x. And I should write here r of x equals. So that means we'll have the antiderivative of negative x squared plus 5x plus 6 with respect to x. So for that first term, your constant would be a negative 1. The second term, you can pull out a 5. And technically, 6 is really 6x to the 0. And don't forget your plus c. Look how far we've come. How does that clean up? Plus 6x plus c? Because that plus c there, how many revenue functions do we have? Infinite. But we want the revenue function that uh, satisfies the requirement, no revenue was made when no items were sold. If no revenue was made, what does that say about r? Zero. r is 0. And when no items were sold, what does that say about x? x is 0. So if we put in 0 in for r and 0 in for x, oh, helps if I listen to what I'm saying. That leaves one thing left over. What does that leave? c is 0. Yeah. Because you have 0 equals 0 plus c, so that means c equals 0. So for some of these problems, so instead of that c there, our real answer is negative one-third x cubed. I forgot what I was saying. Plus 5 halves x squared plus 6x. That is our revenue function. Oh, that's what I was saying. Uh, for some of these, we're going to have some requirements. And that basically translates to we have to figure out what C is to satisfy that requirement. So how do we do part B? Find the demand function. Revenue is price times number sold. So that implies that price, which is P equals the demand of the quantity. So that's our demand function, is the revenue divided by X. So if we do revenue divided by number sold, that gives you the price, which is demand. That's what I meant to say. So you've seen this formula before. We've also had price was supply, that guy. So if you took your revenue function and divided by x, so divide each of these by x, what would you get? Negative one-third x squared. It is good stuff, Penn. Good job for writing that.